A prophecy as old as whiskey, held secret until the appointed time. The spirits are lost when the cursed whiskey appears by its true name. Abomination. So this is Lost Spirit. They were originally in Monterey County, now they're in LA. You sound defeated, Daniel. Uh, heavily peated malt. Yeah, abomination. At the appointed time, a curse will fall over vaulted waters. Knowledge will fail. The sacred will shatter. Another bottle of good whiskey. <gasps> what did you do? No! The proud will pander. Fuck you if you don't think I am so much more of a mooch than you are. A scoundrel will reign supreme. So, this says that you are now on the board of directors. Yeah. That can't be right. Technically, that means you're my boss. It means you work for me! A wizard will consume his corruption. Holy shit, Snacks. What the f- For what is Mooch without the thirst for more? What is Sommelier? Without sophistication. Abomination. That sucked. Yeah, what are we gonna do now? You gonna get back in? Yeah, but we gotta do all the quests and prove ourselves to the whiskey spirits. You're gonna prove yourself. Yeah. You know my plan. You're not really gonna punch any. Right in the dick. All right. What the hell are these seven whiskey trials? We can't get through those without our spirit powers. I don't think we need spirit powers. You Wait. know what we need? What? Science. <laughs> Daniel, I need to go far and I need to go fast. All right. To my loyal steed. <laughs> um, all right, wait up. Ah, oh, that looks cool. Yeah, hell yeah, I do. <laughs> Just chilling on the scooter. <laughs> hey, oh, 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 oh. See later. Almost forgot the camera. Would have been the shortest episode yeah. ever. Oh, no! <laughs> God, it's called the Moochine. The Moochine indeed. That's amazing. I was going for Adventure Brother Scooter. Oh yeah, this means you're a clone, right? Yeah, I'm Dean. <laughs> <laughs> We have a guest today. Yes, it's the Weddle. The Mitch Weddle, magnificent bastard. You've been, you've been with us for a while, man. Yeah, since uh, the Modern Rogue episode. Dude, dude so that yeah, was that's uh, early that's on. Like a year, year, a year. We had like, like, four, we had like 500 K subscribers. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so Mitch actually is a Cooper, and for those that don't know, because I totally knew this. Yeah, well, That's obviously. a barrel maker. I handle lots of wood every day. He's mad. Yeah. <laughs> so Mitch is going to walk us through the anatomy of a whiskey barrel and what cooperage? Uh, I work for the Brown Foreman Cooperage. Brown Foreman owns uh, two cooperages. They make all their own barrels. You might have heard of Jack Daniels yeah. Woodford. You might have heard of Brown Foreman. Since we're opening a distillery, we might need to know our way around a whiskey barrel. So let's walk us through. 
just the parts of a barrel, what makes a good barrel, what makes a bad barrel, what are the options when making a barrel. Like, but just start with the basics. What should I know about a barrel? Here? So basically there are three parts in every barrel. There are two heads, which is the top and bottom. Right. There are staves, which are the oak boards that go up and down, and yeah. then there are irons. Okay. That's all we make and then we assemble it. Barrels in America are made out of white oak. There's mm. multiple reasons for that. It's tight, the, it grows fairly slowly in the north so it doesn't leak as well, provides a lot of great flavors. Interestingly enough, it has to be white oak, not red oak. Mm. Red oak grows much faster, leaks like a sieve, and it smells like you pissed on a campfire when you toast it. <laughs> so you don't want to make yeah. bourbon <laughs> Note to sell. out of red oak states. The fact that you know that very, Camp very explicitly. You yeah, it's, it's like happened. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so basically what comes in is we get a piece of wood that's perfectly straight, a little bit wider than uh, what this will be. Yep. Bring it in, we plane it, we put a little bevel on it, otherwise this is gonna be like a dodecahedron instead right. of an actual c circle. Okay. And then we take them to joining wheels, and joining wheels are literally about five foot wide wheels that have knives in them, and they spin really fast, and you just push your stave up against it, and it puts that nice little bevel and edge on it, oh, so nice. it doesn't... Uh, so how many Coopers are missing fingers? I've been there for four years, and three people have lost or seriously mangled their fingers. Wow. Mm. Out of about 200 and some people, so that's a pretty good, <laughs> that's pretty good considering, in my opinion. The iron, is this just straight, regular, um, run-of-the-mill iron, just pretty much? Shape? Well, it's, it's actually a stainless steel, because it does get wet, and we don't want it to rust okay. and completely fail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting thing about the irons, the only ones you really need are the head iron and this one right here. Mm -hmm. This one's just there for appearance. It looks really pretty and as a fail safe that if this one should break, this one will help hold it. Oh, okay. So it's back then. Yep. Interesting. Okay. And then, you know my favorite bit. Come on. The bunghole. Yes. 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 It's on so, that side. Right here's the bunghole. It's a hole. <laughs> that's basically all it is. We try to put it in the widest stave that's recognizable and then you line up these little rivets with it because this is going to be where you're going to see your uh, most common failure yeah. mm. in irons okay. and for some and since reason that's sitting up anyway yeah, since 99% of the time you're going to want your bung up yeah, yeah you uh, <laughs> you want your rivets up too so inside this barrel I'm, I doubt we could see much if we took that out, but char options. There's a charring process. Yes, uh, so there's charring and toasting. What is charring, what is toasting, and why is it done? Charring is literally just fires. It's a flamethrower we put into the barrel. Okay. Toasting is a lot like a, your toaster. It's literally putting radiant heat into the wood rather than direct flame. Right. And it's a lot like the difference of burning your toast and toasting your toast. Mm. So the char levels go one to seven. The most common are three and four. One is very barely charred. Seven, you're about, you're flirting with your barrel falling apart. Oh, really? really what it is. <laughs> yeah. it's like, it's just basically charcoal kind of held together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, and the, then we also toast it, and the interesting thing is charcoal is a wonderful purifier, so it actually takes some of the really disgusting parts of whiskey out, Right. and it, you know... The plumage. Yeah, the plumage. <laughs> the plumage. It takes the fiddly bits you don't want inside the <laughs> yeah, bottle right. out of the... <laughs> Um, and then toasting is just caramelizing things, so it gives you a lot of really rich sugar notes and that's how you get like the almond and the coconut okay. and a lot of the vanilla. So do they char and toast or char or toast? Uh, both. Okay. So you can either toast and char yeah. or you can just char. It yeah. has to be a charred barrel to be basically an American whiskey. Right. But there are some like Michter's Toasted Rye, they only toast. Can't go into too dirty yeah. many details because I like my job. <laughs> well, no, but, that, that's an interesting point, though. I mean, there is some proprietary stuff. Yeah, like temperature and time spent ch toasting is very proprietary. Okay, interesting. Char levels aren't proprietary because they're pretty industry standard. Sure. Right. So one of the things I, I saw this this infographic one time where it had different char levels, one to seven, and then it would give the notes that those chars were trying to pull out of a whiskey. Does that sound accurate? Yeah, absolutely. They even have those for uh, toast levels. So you can choose the temperature yeah. you toast at, you know, starting around upper 100s and go all the way up to 500. So as a Cooper, do you have a favorite char? You, you, send, you tend to gravitate towards I like whiskey. a number three char. Yeah. Uh, I don't like super oak forward bourbons, yeah, and if either. you char it less, you get a lot of less bitterness, a lot less astringency, like a lot less kind of coffee notes, and I, those are the notes I try to you avoid. You don't like the coffee notes, no. all right. So in terms of the care and feeding of a whiskey barrel, how do you make sure, because this is empty right now. Absolutely. I'm assuming eventually they'll dry out and then yeah. the, it's, bad things will happen, because right now as long as there's 
liquid, it's going to be the wood's going to be swollen. It's going to be tight. Mm -hmm. If it dries out, what happens? Uh, if it dries out, basically you have a very expensive sieve. It's, okay. Uh, I mean the. Wood will start to separate, right. these irons will actually just straight fall off, and your entire barrel will just completely fall apart if you let it go too long. Yeah. What do you do whenever a barrel's empty, but you want to use it later? It's like a used barrel to put other whiskeys in. Uh, you just put about a gallon plus of water in there. You okay. know, uh, you don't really have to slosh it around too much. Maybe when you first put it in there to just make sure nothing goes terribly wrong immediately. Right. But other than that, just put a little water in there. Uh, that must what be about well storing them on their side versus on their end? There's yeah. a lot so of people argue about that. The people that argue about that, it's really old school versus new school. Okay. Uh, rick houses were built because you couldn't build large warehouses that wouldn't always fall down, so they would actually just build the ricks separate from the warehouse around them. That way it was kind of a contingency plan. Also, everything was done by hand. You needed to lift a full one of these, weighs upwards of 600 pounds. So they needed you to be on its side, because that's the easiest way to roll a barrel. Right. Sure. Now we've got these things called like, Forklifts and yeah. pallets, so it doesn't really matter. So a lot of the new distilleries, like uh, Angel's Envy, st store theirs just upright on pallets. And so it's not a problem. Like the head won't dry out because it's not in contact with anything. Well, I mean, if the head dries out, is the whiskey going to leak up? Uh, yeah, I guess no. that's true. Yeah, so it doesn't. The only problem is you can store them so tightly the air won't get to them, so you oh, have to yeah. put a fan in there. That's the only problem they've found so far. There you go. But it's a lot, lot cheaper. Mitch was incredibly generous. He did us an amazing solid. What did Mitch do for us? Uh, he picked up all these barrels for us and drove them here. Yeah, from Kentucky. From Kentucky, in a U-Haul. His, his little arms fighting that steering wheel the whole way. That's the whole, all the winds and everything. <laughs> oh, he's got a gift for you. Oh, I do have a gift. Yeah. So the problem is, you might not know this, Rex was kind of a dick to me. Yeah. And Win! And it was more dick? specifically a dick to uh, my girlfriend. Dick and that's when I really took issue, was when you were a dick to my girlfriend. Well, uh, that, was, that was through the video. That, that was, was by accident, video. too. Yeah, it was kind she of by was, accident. She was, what's it called, an innocent bystander in this yeah. hit job. She got caught in the crossfire. <laughs> <laughs> she really did. It was more of a ricochet effect. Yeah. You can kind of tell oh, what that God. is. But we're filming well, during lunch. Yeah, so here's the thing. <laughs> the great thing is. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. The jumbo gummy pecker. <laughs> the gene is doing a little bit of the camera work today. So if we wanted to reenact the scene from the Hobbit movie where they were in the barrels going down the road. Oh, yeah. Would that barrel support Daniel's Wii frame? It wouldn't collapse, but he'd probably sink like a rock. Yeah! <laughs> the, the crazy thing is, I'm not even that uh, tall. I'm like 5'9". Yeah! I'm standing <laughs> All right, so your machine is very nice, and your whiskey science is very powerful. That doesn't really help me. You want to you wanna think about it with the whiskey? How? Where the... How do you get a 26-year-old Irish whiskey out of the vault? I have my ways. So, you couldn't have been bothered to get another glass? You know, I only have so much storage space. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> you want a little sippy sip? Yeah. Ah! You got me, boys. Woo! All this good stuff. I am the stag. I am whiskey beast of all Irish whiskey, and to win my favor, you will do a live Stream on Monday, random time on the Whiskey Vault channel. Blind tasting of Irish whiskeys. Woo! Yeah, looks like you found your first whiskey beast, boy. Son of a.